Hello beauties, Emin here, and in today's video I'm actually going to walk through picking the Master Lock 1921D padlock. Now this is the first video that I'm recording for this, and I do want to start by saying I am not a professional locksmith, I am not a professional lock picker. I'm actually just starting the hobby of lock picking locks for it. Um, I've started about uh, three months ago was when I actually got my first tools and started um, learning um, how to do lock picking. And I've fallen in love with it since. Um, I love puzzles. I love working my, with my hands. And so um, if you do like tactile puzzles, if you do like... Um, um, a good challenge. I do highly encourage um, at least giving it a try and you can get some really cheap sets uh, Starting sets for like ten dollars covert instruments has the F and G uh, beginning set that's less than ten dollars and um, It's actually a really good hobby and skill to kind of get into um, So the reason why I'm doing these videos is lock picking lock pickers united actually has a really cool belt system that they've uh, implemented and that they maintain uh, And so I figured hey, you know, what? I'm really getting into it. I'm actually getting kind of good with it. So let's start uh, recording some videos at, for submissions for the uh, for their belts and so this is for the orange belt uh, which the 1921D from Master Lock qualifies for. Now, a little bit of information about this lock. Uh, so this is a special limited edition lock that Master Lock produced. Um, it was uh, for their 100th anniversary, and at least from the packaging and Master Lock's documentation, it has a 9 out of 10 security rating. Now, one thing that I have learned with Master Lock is their security rating is very subjective. And it's whatever they feel like um, at the moment. Um, and so this lock has four pins in it. Uh, but what's really interesting is the cylinder can actually hold six pins. And after I pick it, I'm going to gut it and show you exactly kind of what's on the inside. But uh, in comparison, this is the master lock number three. And this is another four pin. It's a little bit smaller, but it has four pins in it. Uh, and this is a rating five out of ten. Now, the only difference between this lock and this lock is that this has spool pins while this has just standard pins in it. And spool pins do make it more of a challenge with picking because uh, you get false sets and you have to really watch your attention and all that fun stuff. Uh, but just that difference between the two um, and also with it being recessed, I mean, granted that does make it a bit more um, picky with the turning tools. Um, but just with that, uh, making this a 9 out of 10 versus a 5 out of 10, you know, to me, I don't know why Master Lock does that. Um, but let's go ahead and start picking this guy here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use bottom of the keyway tension. Uh, a lot of people use top of the keyway tension. And I'm going to talk about this more in future videos. But I have a physical disability that causes a lot of arthritis in the hands and all that. And so top of the keyway tension is a little bit harder. And so for instance here, um, these turning tools here from Covert Instrument are top of the keyway tensions. Uh, and so they go on the top, you hold it like that. And, but for me, that's kind of hard to do. Uh, so I find bottom of the keyway tension easier to hold. But the problem with that is it does restrict the keyway. So it's really a, a, a big trade with, between the two. So, and that can also make it a little bit harder. But I'm going to use my turning tool that I got from the Covert, Instrument, Covert Instruments Genesis set. This is the 0 .040 turning tool. I'm going to use bottom of the, way key, bottom of the keyway tension. And I'm going to use the short hook uh, from the Genesis set from Covert Instruments. I also have my monkey paw here in case I do run into a little issue. Um, I pick this almost every night, but, you know, recording the video. So, you know, you know, when you record or take pictures, it never goes as easy as it has been with practicing. So I'm actually going to start in the back. I start from the front most of the time, but because of this being bottom of the keyway, it does cause a bit of uh, um, restriction. So I'm just going to start there. And you're going to notice that as I push up on some of these, you'll see this uh rotating counterclockwise but yeah i have to rotate clockwise to unlock it that's that um 
a counter rotation I talked about with spool pins that you need to do with them. And I'll show the pins in a little bit here. All right, so I'm going to go to the back there. I got to get under that again. There we go. All right, so I got the uh, number four there good. And um, let's see here. All right, now I'm in the false set. Nope. There we go. All right. So you can see. So let's go ahead and gut this. Now, the nice thing about like some of these master locks here is you can actually gut them and repin them. Uh, with the 1921D here, if you look kind of down there, you'll see that they have a, um, a screw there that has the hex um, driver bit to it. Um, on some of the others they use, the Phillips head, which I like a little bit more, but I'm going to use my Allen wrench here. Cover the cap. Let me get that screwed. All right, so there's the cap. I always like taking the screw out because it does make it a little bit easier. All right, and there is our locking cylinder. Now, the nice thing about the 1921D is that they crimp the back of the cylinders rather than using a retaining bolt. Retaining bolts are a little bit more universal. You see them a lot, but I like the crimped ones actually a bit more because um, I have a problem with the retaining bolt, getting, retaining clips, getting them off. And uh, when I actually get them to come off, uh, half the time they go, and you can hear this little ping, and they go flying off to the side and never to be seen again. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab my key here, and I think this one is the 37. Yep, 37. And so what I'm actually going to do is the nice thing with the clamped, cramped ones is you uh, rotate 90 degrees, press, and now you can pull the pin out, but you do want to have a fowler. So I have a nice wood fowler here that I made. Um, so go ahead and do that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the driver pins for or the key pins first. All right. So you can see with this lock here, um, the pins are very close to one another. In fact, it goes one, two, two, one. And that makes it actually really easy to pick the lock because you don't have a lot of variation between them. So they're very, uh, it's uh, similar. So you can actually rake it open pretty easy or single pick it pretty easily. In comparison, when you have a high low profile, like on this key here, it does make it a bit harder or actually a lot harder for you to pick. But even like with this key, you can see that number one and number three are really high. Uh, in fact, I think number uh, four on this is actually zero. So you actually have three that you actually have to pick through. So, you know, it's Master Lock's keys are um, not, I've been learning that they're not the best keyed even. So, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the security and driving pin or driver pins here. And I just did that. Yep. So you can see it's easy to sometimes just pull that out too far and you go kaboom and everything goes fine. So let's see here. So there's spool pins there and I'm just going to pull the rest of these out then. And there's a spool pin. There's a spool pin, and then those are the springs. All right. So in comparison, I'm also going to put down some of the other security pins here and put, bring them up. So uh, the row that I might put above that is going to be just standard pins, and then I might put some serrated pins there so that you can see the difference between the two. All right. So see if I can get this to focus. So here we have the spool pins that were out of box. Uh, and I actually kind of like the Master Lock spool pins. Um, you can get different profile spool pins and all that. Um, then we have normal or just regular standard driver pins. Now these are really easy. These are what are in the um, Master Lock number three. Uh, and so when you go to raise it, it's just smooth on smooth. And so you don't really have to worry about tension. And when you get your click, you're pretty much set with that. 
and then you have serrated pins. And what the serrations on the serrated pins do is they mimic that click when you get inset. So you have to actually go back through and uh, kind of go back, back and forth several times to make sure that you get it kind of into set. Now you do get the tactile response with it, but as I said before, these are just very simple explanations. I've just been doing this for a few, couple of months at this point. So um, the one thing I did want to point out though is with the key pens, you'll notice with number twos here, you'll see the serrations on those. Now that was, I did replace them. These are not the pins that were um, original with the lock. The original ones were just smooth. They didn't have the serrations. I like adding the serrations because it does add a bit of a challenge if you do overset the key um, or the pen a bit. It does make it so you actually have to almost reset to get back to them, I find. So I did do that little change just to make it a little bit more challenging. Um, but what you'll see sometimes in like the American lock and here we go with this guy here so this is a spool pin as well but you'll notice that you got some serrations with it so when you get to some of the higher end locks you get some of these variations of the spool pins or even serration pins and other in other ways that do add another little bit of a layer of challenge to it um as i said before i'm just starting so uh the american locks are giving me a lot of grief right now but that's mainly also because of the top of the keyway tension that i need to do with these guys um, but yeah, so there is my little breakdown video on picking the 1921D. Uh, do feel free to, you know, put comments and let me know what you think of the videos. If there's, if you do find them interesting, and you want me to make more. Um, I am going to make a video in the near future regarding my disability and some of the challenges that that does bring with, um, lock picking and doing this type of work with my hands with chronic uh, arthritis and all that. So uh, thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you next time.